Um, yeah, hello, and uh, thanks first of all <clears throat> for the invitation to this um, today's uh, data for uh, data for history lecture. Um, I just have to remove this strange zoom buttons again. Um, as uh, Thorsten Hildmann already told you, uh, my uh, academic background is in computer science, information science, and philosophy. So I will speak today about uh, ontology design patterns for history, so to speak, and looking at um, yeah, work which uh, is um, currently done in our so-called DigiCard, which means a digital map lab Holy Roman Empire project. Um, I will first introduce uh, just very shortly uh, into the project. project. Uh, then I will uh, give you a short overview of the problems uh, which we have with this old fashioned um, yeah, geospatial data which you have in uh, geo information systems and, and our objectives um, in, in the work package for data modeling. Um, then I will present may, may, maybe quite too much uh, shackle based ontology design patterns, uh, which we created, uh, which we designed uh, in, in the project. Um, of course, um, for our project specific requirements, but, but of course it's meant that these uh, shackle based ontology design patterns can be used uh, by, by other projects, by similar projects with similar requirements uh, to, to modeling, to uh, data collection. And because I have a background in philosophy, I, I will just shortly uh, dive into the field of applied ontology and just showing possibilities or or possible approaches, how, how you could look behind the sources in order to somehow um, exp exp make explicit uh, um, historical reality behind uh, the sources. And maybe that can be uh, interesting for quite pragmatic reasons, um, just for the case of problems, issues with data normalization. And I will finalize with, with, with a conclusion and a short outlook in in, in, in the work which we have to do in the last uh, yeah, half year of the project. Um, because unfortunately the project is, is almost done. Um, it was a three years, or it, it is still a, a three years project. It's a joint project between yeah, quite a lot of uh, institutes um, from different disciplinary fields um, just put uh, the, lo the logos of the institutes on the slide. Um, and it's um, funded by the Leibniz Association and it's uh, in the program, so-called program Leibniz Cooperative Excellence. Um, we have two larger case studies in uh, the Digica project. The first case study is um, yeah, in, in, in the area of the electorate of minds. And uh, it's about uh, complex spatial structure of the Holy Roman Empire, where we try to apply a kind, kind of prosopographical approach to examine the geographical as well as social mobility of different groups of agents in the Holy Roman Empire. These uh, are, of course, Amtsträger, officials of the Holy Roman Empire, uh, but also students or professors, for example. And we have a lot of um, reused data in this project. For example, um, we, we have this uh, catalog of professors from, from the Mainz University, for example, um, just to have uh, one group for this prospographical approach. But, but I will not focus on, on that case study. In this talk, I will focus mainly or only on, on the case study about electorate of Saxony area, where, uh, which is dedicated to the collection and integration of place-based historical information and uh, the case study explores new ways of visualizing the different political, legal, economic, and social spaces. So all these typical complexities of, of uh, in interrelations in the whole of, of places and actors in the Holy Roman Empire. So I will start, as I said, with a problem statement. Um, I think this article by Kuhn and colleagues is uh, yeah, provides a very good overview of the, the typical problems which you have when you try to use uh, this old-fashioned geodata um, and 
so there's a very long list in this article, but uh, these three points I would say are the most most important things. So, so, yeah, the most um, difficult issues you have to uh, uh, tackle with when, when when you use this geodata. Uh, so first point is the semantics of terms remains implicit or hard to share and reason with. The second point is uh, global unique identifiers are hard to obtain and not encourage. Uh, as, uh, there are no identifiers. So this is uh, typical, not a linked data approach, and it's not really easy to reuse um, and integrate data, um, which is the third point here. And I just... Um, um, dive into my uh, philosophical background uh, because there's an interesting article uh, with the title Prolegomeno for an Ontology of Place. Um, and here's exactly the point um, which I highlighted. Place is rarely, I just quoted, uh, place is rare, rarely given an explicit representation in this model either as domain-specific tessellation, e.g. electoral districts, census tracts, and counties, or as toponyms linked to footprints as in gazetteers. And the state of affairs is problematic as it misses the potential of place as a connector between heterogeneous data spaces. And, and it um, provides further um, uh, yeah, issues um, or points which you should uh, try to um, deal with if you create a new ontology of place. So, one problem is, of course, especially if you um, apply CYDOC CRM, this very large ontology, there's a risk of over-engineering. Uh, and of course, there's a risk of over-engineering if you have an, a philosophical background, because you always can um, do conceptual analysis, phil, phil, uh, ontological analysis, and never start uh, collecting data. So that would be a problem, of course. Uh, you have to be so somehow pragmatic and as you soon will see, I think we we we, we have been quite uh, we have done quite uh, pragmatic uh, modeling decisions and in orienting our data model on the yeah quite pragmatic um, simple structured uh, linked places format uh, which is used for the world historical gazette here for example. So we but in the pro project uh, we started indeed uh, with conceptual modeling and we discussed very often about the uh, question, what, what is place, or especially the question, of course, what is place in the early modern period and place in the Holy Roman Empire. And uh, very pro project specific was the question, what are the space constituting attributes of a place in the early modern Holy Roman Empire? So this would be, for example, um, place-based informa information about um, uh, places of, of execution or uh, uh, show, show of force and so on. And, um, or, or, or for example, um, border stones, maybe, for, for example, also. And, um, but then if you immediately would start to uh, use a CIDOC CRM as an ontology, you have this problem that it's a class which is. Um, or which should probably be meant for modeling places, E53 place. Um, it's in the documentation of CDOC CRM that this uh, class is used to describe, um, strictly speaking, just the physical location of things or phenomena or other areas of interest. And so we, we created, we started from, from an um, own class uh, in a at the moment very small anthology which uh, mainly has only this anchor point class to model places or to model analysis place based information DMLO place DMLO is a prefix for digital map lab ontology and we we follow others uh, in using uh, the E92 space time volume to model places and but we combine it uh, with a CRM uh, a class to model uh, legal bodies, and that's exact, exactly the way uh, Gertz and colleague st uh, started uh, to model a CRM-based um, yeah, event gazette here. For example, here you can see um, the data model developed by Gertz and colleagues 
based on the same C C CRM classes E92 space time volume, which you can see, see here in, in the middle, or yeah, more or less it's at, at the root of this. Yeah, um, I would also uh, call it a design pattern. Um, and and um, yeah, and uh, added this with the class E40 legal body. And um, so the so reason for that is that we um, would be able to uh, have a very broad definition or a very broad concept of place so that we we are able not only to um, uh, represent settlements like uh, towns and villages, for example, but also um, ad administrative administrative units and uh, or whole territories or may even the whole uh, Holy Roman Empire maybe for example as, as, as kind of place in the widest uh, sense uh, of the concept and legal body of course because it's, it, it's a kind of actor um, an ad administrative unit or, or a territory um, um, yeah, just just a short look in in our research data lifecycle. Um, um, I always find it um, in, uh, good good for in, systematic inspiration to have a look in this yeah, book uh, from two thousand six, uh, past, present, and future of historical information science, where uh, this uh, concept of the historical information cycle, life historical information life cycle, uh, was presented, and so. Um, at the beginning, you have this creation phase where, where you start to collect new data, or if it's about uh, creating a data model, you have to start with some ontology engineering, and then and 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 then uh, the cycle starts. Uh, the next phase, enrichment, uh, then the editing phase, and all these phases can involve ontologies, but must not involve ontologies. What is important for our project and our research data? Infrastructure also is uh, the retrieval phase because we have to col collect a lot of data. We have to integrate data, which I, I would locate as an enrichment phase. Uh, but but the retrieval phase is uh, yeah central or the starting point to do analysis and presentations. And these two phases should uh, be considered as an iterative process or workflow where you um, retrieve uh, place-based information for a specific um, yeah, use case. You want to um, experimentally try out a new kind of uh, visualization. And so you get the uh, information you need for that and, and do some analysis, may maybe even uh, this involves some applied ontology to refine your data or data models and so on. and. Yeah, as I said, it should be an iterative process, and and maybe in of course in our project, the most interesting point or uh, the most important point is that we 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 do not run through the cycle, uh, starting uh, putting in data and and ending up with the same kind of old-fashioned uh, patchwork maps of the Holy Roman Empire, but but we um, experimentally try out. New, new ways of uh, visualizing the complexities in the Holy Roman Empire. And so it's an iterative process and not um, uh, has, has no final product in uh, as, as a digital map or whatever. And it's more an interactive toolkit um, or interactive visualizations which should be used to, to refine data and uh, trying out things experimentally. So just, just a short overview. Uh, of our research data infrastructure, which is uh, which is um, unfortunately quite uh, prototypically only, we have a meta factory instance which should um, be replaced uh, with a research space instance. Uh, but what what, it, what we do not have is, for example, um, um, yeah, semantic forms to edit data. For, for data collection, we, we have a very easy, very pragmatic approach. Uh, we, we collect data, this is prosopographical, biographical data for the, uh, for, for the, for the case study minds um, uh, in tabular form. And, and then we integrate this data. We do some record linkage with Python scripts and so on and integrate data in RDF form according, uh, confirming uh, to to the ontology design patterns. 
And the same is done in principle with uh, legacy data, which we have from some Atlas project uh, databases for the electorate of uh, Saxony um, case study. And, and so in the end, Metafactory or later research space is only used as a platform to, um, yeah, to explore data, to analyze that data, or uh, as central platform for the retrieval, um, yeah, retrieval phase or retrieval stage in the research data life cycle. And so, for example, we have also this, uh, we are quite old linked open data for web feature service adapter, but it still works very good. And uh, some main feature of this adapter is to uh, write or to define Sparkle queries <clears throat> to get out uh, place-based information from, from the triple store, from the GraphDB triple store and uh, deliver it uh, via web feature service um, or, or web feature service says, because every Sparkle uh, behind every web feature service as a Spark query. And it's a quite uh, practical approach to connect, for example, QGIS, uh, just to experiment with, with the data to draw some simple maps. Or for example, uh, at the moment we are experimenting with Voronoi dia diagrams uh, to reconstruct, so to speak, um, the spatial extent of parishes or um, Manorial affiliations are yeah, Grundherrschaften in German. I never know the, the correct uh, English word for that. Um, or who, uh, or, um, yeah, administrative areas, for example. And this can be interesting to compare it with the historical maps. Um, but it's uh, still an experiment, and that's also the reason why I will not show you, unfortunately, not a picture of this uh, experiments, not yet. Um, yeah, and of course, the other case is uh, to connect some uh, web mapping applications uh, on a web server or also in a web browser, perhaps for some interactive uh, visualization tools. And 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 this, uh, we, at the moment, we we are um, uh, finally, uh, of course, uh, integrating, collecting our data, filling gaps in our data, but we are also uh, writing tutorials and best practices for data modeling, but also for tutorials, how to build up an um, environment like this, because it, it's not very difficult, for example, to use this, to connect this linked open data web feature service adapter to a triple store and so on. Yeah, uh, finally, um, the main part uh, of the talk, um, shackle-based ontology design patterns for place-based information. Um, the problem is when you start uh, building an ontology uh, aligned or based on yeah, top level ontology or a core ontology like Cydox CRM, it's quite difficult to, to pick, pick out the, yeah, the necessary, the, the, the right, um, the relevant classes and properties. And um, Maybe it would be easier if you start with a uh, diagrammatic ontology approach. Uh, here, for example, is, uh, so to speak, the uh, early modern version of it in uh, Lohart's uh, yeah, textbook, uh, the first textbook uh, about ontology, uh, where you have all these uh, brackets with uh, conceptual distinctions. And it's, of course, quite similar as, as you could use an um, overview uh, for an overview of the complexity of the complex uh, class taxonomy uh, in CIDOC CRM, where you have, of course, this typical distinction between material and immaterial uh, stuff and so on. And or here, for example, you have this yeah, somehow strange uh, category uh, space time volume, uh, because, um, but just another short uh, explanation into philosophy or philosophical ontology from a philosophical point of view is this concept uh, is quite problematic because it mixes two um, different uh, philosophies or philosophical theories about uh, space and uh, yeah space time space and time um, and, and here you have this category place in the Cydex CRM ontology and, and here are also this immaterial objects which are interesting for example 
to model also sources, historical sources, for example, uh, as kind of uh, in propositional object or uh, information object and so on. Um, yeah, all these all this different um, subclasses of conceptual object. Um, and of course, activity or events, the more general class where, where you can start all this event-based um, modeling, which is typical for CDX0M. Yeah, as I said already, uh, we we started to develop our own, but but own just very small ontology, digital map lab ontology with this class place as anchor point, so to speak, for for all the place based information. Um, uh, we have a, a simplified representation of uh, centroid point coordinates uh, where we just use uh, geosparkle properties and not uh, so complex way uh, which you would have to do if, if you use some uh, CIDOC CRM classes. Um, yeah, and in the end, it's, I, I think I already told you, in the end, it's a quite pragmatic approach, approach similar to the linked places format, uh, which is used, um, was developed by Carl Grossner and colleagues for the World Historical Gasset here. And, and it's also similar like this uh, play, Pleiades data model with its con uh, concept of place, <clears throat> which is also a broad concept of place. And it's definitely not this concept of place which you have uh, with the CIDOC uh, CRM class E53 uh, place, which is the location, the physical location of things. Yeah, and uh, inspired by linked places uh, format design, uh, despite the fact uh, that it's quite easy, but of course it uses all this uh, CIDOC CRM uh, stuff and relevant extensions like uh, CRM Geo, CRM Sci for, for, for measurements, for example. You can use this for pre-statistical uh, census data, for example, which we also get out of uh, one of our legacy databases. Uh, CDOC CRM PC, which provides a strange way uh, from a, a representation language point of view, a complex way to, to model um, roles of actors in events, for example. Ferber OO uh, to model historical sources, um, not big because we want not just to refer to sources or, or just enter bibliographic citation in free text form, but we, we try to, to model the sources too. Um, and, and the data sets, of course, we reuse in our yeah, whole workflow. And, it, and last but not least, uh, we try to use SDHSS um, uh, for, for, for social ob objects, for example, for, for, for uh, affiliations and right ownerships and so on. But we will see that soon in as a ontology design pattern uh, diagrams and ex data examples. Um, yeah, that's the whole uh, diagram. Maybe I could try to zoom in, but uh, I, I, I think that wouldn't work. Um, very good. I just want to um, uh, point at this um, class or node shape in Shackle, which is uh, the node shape for time spans, which can be used in our data for relative dating, for example. And we also added some elements from the provenance ontology. For example, for some reasons, we, we um, derive time spans from time spans, which uh, uh, contains data or date information from the sources. Uh, for, for example, if uh, date information is normalized to, to the granularity of years or whatever for information retrieval purposes or visualization purposes. Um, yeah, ju just to mention that. And, and, and um, here somewhere we also use uh, provenance ontology association or a qualitative relation elements uh, to do some kind of um, re yeah, referencing to uh, um, source material and to give also page numbers or folio numbers if, if there are manuscripts. Uh, yeah, as I said, you cannot see that, but but but, but it's not not uh, anymore um, my focus in the talk. Uh, just will uh, focus 
zoom in on the uh, design patterns for the specific um, yeah, place-based information we need, for example. Of course, we need some point coordinates as anchor point uh, and as, as um, yeah, that we are able to put uh, the, the place on a map, uh, of course. And here is the snow shape defined in the shekel, the shapes constraints, uh, constraint language uh, for a century shape. And it's just using GeoSparkle element as a well known text. Um, yeah, and you have just to provide some point coordinates for, for that. And uh, here is what I mentioned just before in the very, in, in the two large diagrams, this provenance ontology. Um, elements or properties we use qualified der derivation, for example, is used if it um, if the point coordinates are um, derived from, from existing data or uh, from, from a legacy database, for example. And we, we so, so we have kind of distinction between, okay, is, is the data, uh, is, a, is, is the information from reused data or is the information from a primary source, so from a historical source. Um, yeah, okay, uh, we, we can discuss that, um, but at the moment that's our way to distinguish uh, data provenance for practical reasoning, uh, not reasoning, for practical reasons. Um, yeah, um, the next uh, pattern is very important, of course, because it um, enables to model historical place names and it's, uh, yeah, quite straightforward, just using a class from, from Ferber OO, by the way, the name use activity class, which is a constraint here by this uh, name use shape, um, node shape in, in Shekel. And um, yeah, it's, it's connected with an um, Cytox CRM appellation class, which you just use uh, for uh, yeah, storing the name in uh, probably in different languages. Um, you, you, in principle, you can you can use your own uh, vocabulary um, with with, uh, with concepts uh, defining uh, languages. Here, here we link uh, we, we follow a linked data approach and uh, use this um, LV, LV ontology, uh, this lexical ontology, where you have also um, Antique and uh, languages um, from um, yeah um, early modern German and whatnot, for example, um, and as it says, what um, this, this was one of the first patterns uh, we uh, created, and so we we did some first experiment uh, experiments just uh, using uh, this tabular um, uh, for, format uh, linked places TSV. Uh, where it's possible to collect uh, gazetteer information which uh, should be interested in the world historic gazetteer. And we, <clears throat> as a historical source, we use this Topographia Germania, so volume uh, where you can find uh, places in, in uh, the electorate of um, Mainz, uh, for example. And here, for example, you have all these Latin names, but uh, also, for example, the German or French name for Mainz. And finally, it looks like that in RDF turtle syntax. Um, yeah, um, which uses uh, the shackle based uh, constraints to model or represent this place name information. And um, it's here, it's an, an older version. An older version of the pattern was used here. Here at the beginning, uh, we just used uh, this is documented in property uh, from CDOC CRM to refer to the source. But it's not possible, uh, for example, in in uh, this uh, set um, property to to um, provide information about a specific uh, location in in the document. So, and, and that's the reason why we now use this provenance ontology. Uh, qualitative uh, relation patterns for that. As the next pattern is to model place types. Um, it's 
also very straightforward and it um, has here this place type assignment shape with uh, Cytox CRM class in, in the background and the place type restriction. Uh, in the other patterns, there are also such kind of uh, type restrictions. And this is just an um, shackle node shape to constrain uh, the, um, yeah, the range for this property here. In, in that case, it's P42 assigned. Uh, so you are, are only allowed to use place concepts from our project specific uh, vocabulary, so project specific place typology, uh, which has here this URI digica.eu uh, vocabulary place. So, but uh, it would be possible, for example, again using um, Topographia Germania for a source not only for place names, but also for uh, place types. For example, you have mines. You have different here, already in the first sentence, uh, different meanings of mines. So mines is mentioned as a Hauptstadt, a capital, a capital of the ja, so hochlöblichsten Erzbistum uh, and the Hauptstadt of the Kurfürstentum mines. So the, the capital of the electorate of mines. And you could all, um, instead of using our, at the moment, still very simple uh, place typology, you could also use the his uh, geotypes uh, vocabulary, which was now designed, I think, already a few years ago. And um, it, it has, um, first of all, it, it has an interesting um, distinction of place types at the basic level. It, um, for example, there's a concept of conceptual place. And in that part of the taxonomy, you have all this uh, play, place types for uh, this different kinds of administrative uh, place types. For example, um, yeah, I have now here the German version, obviously, uh, par parishes or um, dioceses, for example, bistum, and so, and so on. But but you have, so that's a class, um, yeah, so ecclesiastical administrative areas, but you have also things like, um, yeah, uh, political administrative units and so on. Um, but what, what you cannot see here in this screenshot, uh, there is an, an, another interesting uh, distinction on the first level of the taxonomy. Uh, you, you have, um, uh, not only conceptual place, but but also um, yeah, built place, gebauter Ort in German, built place, uh, which are, are for example uh, mills or bridges or uh, in infrastructure trans transport infrastructure in general. So without um, political or, or ecclesiastical or legal aspects, so that could be a way to to use multiple types to to classify, to describe an, a place. And uh, for example, at this uh, Histacomp workshop in Münster in September this year, uh, dynamic uh, typologies or functional typologies uh, for towns, for the, uh, as they are used in this historical town atlas project, uh, for example, were discussed. And for example, uh, yeah, Hauptstadt, capital would be kind of functional place type. Um, so, so to speak, from an Aristotelian point of view, first of all, you would uh, classify a place as a city or as a town, but a uh, Hauptstadt is, is only a kind of functional type. And that could be um, typed as functional type if you use a uh, functional type uh, typology, for example, uh, to classify your places in, 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 in your data. Um, yeah, maybe I should skip that, um, but um, I, I always like this example. Uh, 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 when Pufendorf uh, describes the whole, the whole Roman Empire, um, of course, as, as, as like a monster. And uh, but in, in context of uh, ontology uh, design or uh, data modeling, and especially in, in the context of 
such a place type uh, design pattern, it, it's easily, it can be easily understood what, what is meant with this uh, um, proposition. Because, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's it's fast if I just quote um, this nice introduction to the Holy Roman Empire from Valley. Um, what he meant by that was simply that the empire could not straightforwardly be classified as a monarchy, an aristocracy, or a democracy, the, the categories of governments that Aristotle had defined. So if we have no concept uh, to correctly classify the Holy Ram Roman Empire as a whole, uh, of course, it must uh, appear like, like a monster, so to speak. Um, now we are at as a most important um, design pattern for our project, as a design pattern for political, legal, ecclesiastical affiliations and right holdings in general. And uh, that's a place where we reuse a class from the SDHSS uh, project uh, or profile from which you can find with all its classes and properties in Ontomy, its Ontomy um, environment. Um, in, in the end, it's also just kind of an area relation pattern or qualitative uh, relation pattern um, where we use two um, concept schemes. Um, one concept scheme is, of course, the most important one to define the right type. Here, here you have this node, node shape right type restriction, um, where you define, for, uh, for example, if it's a uh, political uh, affiliation, for example, that would be used uh, to uh, relate a place to its administrative unit uh, in, in uh, with Saxon in the electorate of Saxony, for example, uh, this, is, this is typically Ämter, um, where a place belongs to um, via political affiliation. Legal affiliation would be a uh, higher core and uh, uh, Hochgerichtsbarkeit and Niedergerichtsbarkeit is, uh, only have those German words available uh, for now. Um, and um, yeah, ecclesiastical affiliation would be used to, to uh, model kind of church organization structure. Um, and what is uh, very interesting for our project are this uh, manorial affiliations um, in German, this Grundherrschaftliche Zugehörigkeiten, uh, affiliation, manorial affiliations. And yeah, that was uh, my idea just to reuse this uh, class from SDHSS because it seems to be quite uh, usable for, for that. Um, yeah, and of course, um, we have some information from, from the micro level, for, 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 from the level of micro data. And that's the reason why we, uh, why here we use an uh, this is the right holder association shape because from some data sources we have uh, some quantitative information uh, from from the micro level, so to speak. Uh, for ex for example, there is also shared. Um, there are also shared right holdings, and there are also disputed right holdings. Uh, but then um, it's often the case that, as that you have shared right holdings, and uh, that refers to the micro level. For example, one actor, uh, one uh, a manorial landlord has may maybe 10 uh, estates um, and another one has only five and the third one has only three. And so you have kind of ordering and we, we just wanted to not get lost. Uh, we, we, we didn't want to lose this information uh, because it could be uh, interesting to use it uh, also in visualizations, and so we have this. It's kind of kind of a hack, of course, um, but uh, that's more the knowledge graphish way to just add this information via another ontology design pattern by, yeah, putting in between um, the actor and uh, the, the is right off property this association class where you can put in uh, additional information from the micro level, as I said, uh, which is here called a has an index, but, but it can also represent uh, explicit numbers of uh, estates uh, where a, yeah, a right holder has his uh, rights on. Um, 
Um, may, maybe we can skip that because I think I already told you about um, set um, modeling decisions. Okay, uh, SDHSS is a semantic data for humanities and social sciences application profile you can find in OntoMe. And uh, may maybe that's interesting just to be sure that this class C14 holding of a right obligation could or should be the, the right class to reuse from this uh, SDHSS uh, to model right holdings. Yeah, uh, P9 is right off links to one or more right holders and it's uh, as a property is characterized, described as uh, as of following, if more than one actor is associated, this means they exercise their right on the same persistent item collectively and during the same period uh, of time. And that's exactly what we want to model. So I already told you about a legacy data, which we rarely use. Uh, this is a uh, historical Ortsverzeichnis from Sachsen, uh, HOV. It provides information about the order of the right holders and another legacy database. Uh, so we were allowed to reuse a database dump from the Repertorium Saxonicum, uh, which uh, provides also data, place-based data for Saxony, also uh, including, as I already told you, uh, pre-statistical data, for example, uh, of uh, taxes and so on or uh, also population, for example, which could also be interesting for visualizations. Yeah, but um, this database provides information about the amount of these dates processed by each right holder. I already told you about that. Um, yeah, and in, in the first um, draft of the pattern, we just used an RDF list where we lost this information and that therefore we, uh, in the current second draft, use and we apply an N area qualitative relation link data pattern. By the way, this uh, data incubator website, or it's finally, um, it, it's a book, um, is quite interesting. Um, okay, here's should be the link to N area relation and the second link to qualified relation. Um, some detailed uh, description of the uh, modeling problem and how you can solve uh, this typical modeling problem with this kind of simple linked data patterns. Um, yeah, how, how we represent shared dominion, um, which means shared right holdings as well as deep disputed right holdings. Uh, our solution is, uh, as I told you, to use knowledge organization systems, just a vocabulary, um, a, yeah, taxonomy of concepts, uh, and it's also quite simple still at the moment. We have only two concepts uh, versus affiliation types. Uh, um, right holding is shared or right holdings are disputed. So these are two possible things which can happen. And uh, here is an example of uh, just to put in some maps uh, in the presentation, an example of a disputed uh, Landesherrschaft, which um, took place uh, in the area of, of well, but the dispute took place between the electorate of Saxony and the Herrschaft, the Sch Schönburger Herrschaften. And as you can see, um, this is place Ölnitz, um, uh, in, in, in the first map from 1751 still belongs to, to Saxony on the right side. And later on in, in, in this kind of war of maps 1759, uh, uh, it belongs to the Schönburger Herrschaften, which you can see here um, yeah, in, 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 in this typical polygon-like uh, map drawing. And that uh, leads us to, to, to one of our last patterns, the spatial extent of, of a place pattern. And, and it's quite similar as in um, CDOC CRM based um, gasseteer data models, um, which uh, one of them was, for example, already uh, presented here, also as a data for history lecture. Another one was developed by Francesco Beretto, for example, and all these uh, use uh, presence 
class uh, from CDOC CRM to model the uh, spatial extent throughout a spe specific uh, time span. And uh, here's the technical part, uh, again, using properties from GeoSparkle for pragmatic reasons. Uh, so this can be polygon or multi-polygon data in well known text uh, format or also in geo-json format maybe and could contain some information for about um, um, yeah, certainty or uh, accuracy and uh, spatial resolution of the geo data. Uh, here's just an example from from our yeah our first experiments where we um, integrated for example datasets uh, from 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 the Germania Sacra collection of datasets um, here as a um, diocese borders dataset from Germania Sacra was integrated and as this violet thin line uh, is, is a border between two um, dioceses. Uh, uh, and it's interesting to uh, combine that with a layer uh, on the map with data from the Via Bundus project, for example, which provides um, polygons for, for the cities. And so here you have interesting case that the border of two dioceses runs uh, through, through the city of Wolfenbüttel. And Wolfenbüttel looks quite nice, by the way, in this uh, polygon shapes from the Via Bundus um, data set and this blue one is a river from 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 some shape file or whatever um and i already uh, told you about our current experiments creating Voronoi or, uh, diagrams or experimenting with tissue polygons to to somehow recreate this old-fashioned patchwork maps which we don't want to do but uh, it's an interesting experiment and it's uh, indeed an interesting way to to show uh, the spatial extent of um, administrative areas or, or things like parishes, pa parishes ecclesiastical um, entities, for example, where, where you have no uh, data, but, but you can um, reconstruct or construct this spatial ex extent by using minimal uh, place-based information and applying this Voronoi uh, diagram, diagram algorithm, you, you can get um, results like uh, Polish colleagues, for example, here from data from the uh, historical at atlas from Poland. Uh, so this is this red lines are the borders of parishes con constructed from minimal affiliation, ecclesiastical uh, affiliation data from from the Atlas database. Um, yeah, so, so last part, I, may, maybe we, we should or can skip, skip that, it's, but it, it's just an interesting um, uh, demonstration of reusing uh, CIDOC CRM classes and properties. In that case, uh, we use uh, um, CIDOC CRM SI, scientific extension to model measurements. And uh, we created this, um, pattern to model uh, so, so taxes, uh, which, yeah, that's the point, not the, in, in the data we have not the taxes which were paid, uh, but, but it's information about taxes um, which should be paid. Um, but uh, I, I think we can discuss this maybe after the talk in the discussion, uh, I uh, have an example uh, of some population, some kind of census data, which is not a problem for this pattern because this is indeed a kind of measurement where you have the amount of people uh, of different uh, types, for example, here, Gärtner uh, uh, or Besessene Mann, whatever it means in English. Um, and these are be, this can be considered as kind of measurements uh, which you have as quantitative data in some historical source, for example. Um, yeah, and uh, that, that's the case here, an example for um, tributes or taxes paid uh, to, and we, we in, in our project, we are not interested on uh, 
on on amount of um, stuff which were trans tra transferred um, to a Grundherr or whatever, but uh, we are only interested to whom it was transferred and therefore it's here typed as a re recipient and as a re recipient is uh, some actor in that case it's a, a monastery close to monastery Swansig. Uh, it's here for demonstration just uh, minimal uh, data just just uh, containing the, the rdfs label close to sonic and so on um and um i will come to a conclusion uh, with a short uh, excursion into applied ontology and historical reality representation. Um, I think we can skip this interesting quote from uh, my favorite uh, digital history or historical information science book, past, present, and future of historical information science book. Um, okay, uh, it, it's about the problems that there are no real good data models for historical databases. Of course, um, the book is from 2006, but but you can uh, critically ask if, if there are really uh, yeah uh, new new useful data models for for that. Um, or the problem is indeed um, the problem you have with this uh, the problems you have with old fashioned uh, legacy databases. Um, of course, as uh, a historian, Otford Science von Sachsen is a, uh, provides a huge amount of data, but but they, um, a large amount of uh, information or data is not not normalized, and uh, it's the same case uh, for the, our real legacy database of the Repertorium Saxonicum. Um, and just a short example where where the problem is the left. Uh, snippet from, from the graph database uh, shows a mineral affiliation um, extracted from the Hof database. And on the right side, you see a uh, graph database extraction from reused data from the Repertorium Saxonicum database. And um, what I wanted to show you is uh, are these two uh, nodes. Uh, here, here you have Rittergut Badsdorf as an right holder or right owner and uh, from the Repertorium Saxonicum. So um, in the end, this is our kind of factoids. So it's, it's uh, in the end, it's um, this data represents the same historical fact uh, or uh, relation. It, it's about the same uh, manorial affiliation. Um, at the same time, okay, here you would have to zoom in with the time span. Um, would also be uh, 1550 around this time. Uh, but but you have uh, the information of the right holder you have in uh, different granularity here here as an um, um, uh, legal body, a uh, 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 rittergut, some kind of organization. And here you have a, a specific uh, person, Ernst von Militz to Batzdorf. And now, uh, just my, my idea is just to, maybe it would be helpful to have a look uh, into the historical reality behind the sources. Uh, in that case, it would be, for example, the federal law of uh, the electorate of Saxony. And maybe it would be helpful uh, to use this context for data normalization. And um, of course, this would, would be very difficult, but um, uh, in the end, it would be also interesting to, to, to add some kind of uh, um, more detailed analysis of the documents involved in, in all this yeah, document acts in, in the end. And, but that would also be, of course, very, very difficult to, to, to do for a large um, yeah, set of data, uh, because here you would have to apply a philosoph a philosophical theory of document app acts, which means in the end that you would have to model what was done with these documents, for example, what was done with uh, feudal or thief charters, feudal reversals, rentals, maps, and account books, and so on. Um, when, when, for example, um, a new right owner established uh, his uh, dom dominion and so on. And 
as this German quote uh, just uh, refers to to a whole book about uh, yeah Rittergüter, and uh, it just mentions uh, it it refers to the feudal law in um, electorate of Saxony, uh, and it says that um, yeah uh, none of that would be correct uh, from 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 strictly speaking from this uh, con um, law context because um, right ownership uh, always, always belongs to um, the, um, yeah, the family, the, the noble family uh, in, in that case. And, and so here, here should uh, be the entry to Batzdorf or, or uh, von, von Militz to Batzdorf. That should be the label uh, describing the, the whole noble family, but, but not a uh, not a specific person. So, but but set, set just for an idea, for a possible approach to apply apply some some more, um, yeah, model oriented data normalization in that case or data processing in general, instead of just processing the sources. So, the source uh, oriented data processing approach, and um, you you can also find. Uh, this distinction between source-oriented uh, versus model-oriented data processing in, in my favorite book, uh, Past, Present, and Future of Historic Information Science. Um, I think we will skip that because I told you already that we uh, will only focus on uh, place-based data or information for Saxony. And our biographical data is uh, collected in the second case study. But of course, it's interesting, or it could be interesting, uh, if you connect uh, this uh, data, this uh, data about all the biographical um, activities, about all the life events of historical actors uh, with the place information. Of course, that's a little bit problematic because the one case study focuses on um, places and also actors in uh, the electorate of Mainz and the other one uh, on places in the electorate of Saxony. But but this, despite that, it, for, in principle, it's interesting to, to combine, of course, uh, this uh, biographical information with place-based information. Um, that's just another form of this um, activity uh, and role of an actor pattern, um, which is mainly meant to do information integration and information retrieval. And as I told you in the beginning, we also use the Cytox here MPC extension, and this extension is in action here in this pattern, and, and also in our pattern, and it's a version of, of that pattern. Uh, provided um, such a uh, proposed by, by Hart, Brelo, and Michon. Um, yeah, and it's quite a little bit complex, but uh, you can. Uh, our goal was to to model uh, biographical data uh, in a in a very uh, general form uh, to to follow this prosopographic factoid approach, and that's possible with 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 that um, kind of modeling uh, of of roles of persons. Uh, so in in the end, and now I'm talking. Uh, uh, about biographical data a little bit uh, in the end. Uh, we use a typology um, concept scheme to um, specify the activity type. Um, and we use a concept scheme with concepts to specify the roles. And this are all this um, uh, yeah, roles, um, officials or students uh, or um, professors ca ca can have in, in the Holy Roman Empire, at, at least uh, so, so, uh, activity types and roles, which uh, you can find in our sources, of course. Um, yeah, and to come to a conclusion and outlook, um, as I told you, we try to move from the commercial meta factory to the open source research space as a virtual research environment for the integrated data 
for data preparation and data collection, as I told you, we use just a simple approach with uh, tabular data and Python scripts to do record linkage uh, and, and so on. Uh, but for the integrated data, which in the long run, run should be uh, used for visualization uh, and of course also analysis and maybe even reasoning, which would be of course interesting in a semantic web technology framework. Um, and uh, what we are also thinking about, but that would be a future project, of course, is to develop uh, we are kind of visual modeling language for concept conceptual modeling suitable for historians. Uh, and that could be something like, or of course, you could uh, only use onto UML for that, for example, where, where you have um, um, con uh, yeah, um, uh, conceptual modeling language to do really complex modeling. Uh, here, for example, is um, a diagram showing the, all the different roles in the Catholic clergy. And, and on the right bottom side, you, you have an, um, yeah diagram of, of the institution of electing a, a new pope, how, how this works, who, which kind of actors are uh, involved in which role and so on, and um, how it ends up with a new pope and so on. And th that would be a possible way, for example, to, to model this complex um, um, context of uh, feudal law or different feudal laws in different regions of the Holy Roman Empire, of course. Um, yeah, and in the end, uh, we would also like to have some kind of semantic components for analysis and visualization in this uh, research uh, space environment. But that, of course, would also be another project. And um, just some inspiration, some analog inspiration from this old uh, historic atlas projects here, for example, you have a diagram, a map based diagram from the historical atlas of Bavaria, uh, where uh, castles are shown, which were uh, um, which uh, citizens of Regensburg bought and uh, uh, in, in order to prevent Bavarians to um, interfere into, into trade routes. Uh, and as you may see in the map, some castles were bought and immediately destroyed. So that there are no more problems from, from, from that point, from that location. Uh, but uh, of course, it would be just an interesting case um, an interesting use case for an interactive visualization because it would be interesting, for example, if you would be able to add some information about trade routes indeed. And, and that's a complicated case case of trade routes because these are safe conduct, safe conduct um, uh, ways uh, in the early Roman, uh, in the early modern Holy Roman Empire where you have um, yeah, kind of shared or even disputed rights uh, of uh, safe conduct and uh, we know we have no time to look into the details but but that's one uh, pattern we would like to add uh, in, in in the next few months to be able to to, to model a small selection of this kind of strange early modern holy roman empire like uh, safe conduct uh, routes and yeah, as I said, it would be interesting to 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 just add another layer with that kind of information um, to information like that one from from the historical atlas from Bayern. Of course, this is two different regions and wouldn't be interesting or uh, compatible to combine. But yeah, uh, you need of course the right sources and uh, be able to extract the right data from it. And I, finally, I conclude with this uh, nice quote from Lunen from, from his article, Tracking in a New Territory, Reimagining GIS for History. Rather than a visualization tool, GIS should be used as a painting tool, a tool to creatively engage with one's sources. And, and, and then during my talk, I tried to argue that, argue that you have to do source-oriented modeling, but also model-oriented modeling or, or data processing. So that is, um, you really need some kind of historical reality representation, so to speak, to be able to integrate all, all this uh, information from, from uh, different sources or, or maybe even from different regions with all their specialities. Uh, for example, 
Bavaria is uh, not the same thing as uh, electorate of Saxony in early modern times and so on. So, uh, yeah, finally, thank you.